In this video, I'd like to talk about K, Q, and Le Chatelier's principle. So Le Chatelier's principle is essentially the idea that a reaction wants to stay at its own equilibrium. It wants to remain at the point where Q equals K. And if we disturb the reaction and we shift it away such that maybe Q is greater than K or Q is less than K, the reaction always wants to come back to this equilibrium state. So I have an example reaction right here that we can use to think about this. So it's A plus B goes to C plus D plus E. And these lowercase letters here represent the stoichiometric coefficients associated with each chemical. So you can see here that I've written the Q expression for this reaction right here. Concentration of C to its coefficient, concentration of D to its stoichiometric coefficient, over the concentration of A to its stoichiometric coefficient times the concentration of B to its stoichiometric coefficient. And notice I left out E here. You always exclude pure solids and pure liquids from your Q and K expressions. So in order to see Le Chatelier's principle in action, I wrote out a few possible scenarios here where we shift this reaction away from equilibrium. So a little trick you can use to tell the difference between a left shift and a right shift is to sort of think about this entire reaction as a pool of water. If we increase C, think about we added more water onto this side. So the water is going to spill over to the reactant side. Thus the, reactants is, the reaction would shift to the left. In scenario two, if we increase the amount of B, it's like pouring water onto the reactant side. The extra water is going to shift over to the product side. So the reaction would shift to the right. If we were to decrease the amount of D, it's kind of like scooping out some water on the product side. So more water is going to spill this way to fill in that hole and the reaction would shift to the right. If we decrease the amount of A, it's kind of like scooping the water out from this side. So the products are going to come back over to the reactants and fill the hole that was left over here and the reaction will shift to the left. Okay, let's think about Le Chatelier's principle now in the context of two special reactions, an endothermic reaction and an exothermic reaction. So an endothermic reaction can be thought of a reaction where heat is one of the reactants, right? Endothermic reactions consume heat to make their products, so we can put heat as a reactant here. So the possible scenarios that I can use to perturb this reaction are, first, what if I cool down the reaction? By cooling down the reaction, I'm taking away heat. So using our pool of water analogy, if I scoop out some of this heat, the products are going to want to spill back over to the reactants to fill in that hole. Thus the reaction will shift to the left. In the second scenario, what if I heat up the reaction? What if I pour in extra heat? Well, the reactants are going to want to spill over to the products because of that extra water I poured in. So the reaction will shift to the right. Now let's look at an exothermic reaction. So in an exothermic reaction, you can actually think about heat as being one of the products. Exothermic reactions give off heat. So in those two same scenarios, what if I cooled down an exothermic reaction? Well, if I cool down this reaction, it's sort of like taking away the heat. So if I scoop out the heat from the product side, it's going to leave a hole there for which the reactants can come fill. They'll spill over to come fill it. So the reaction will shift to the right. What if I heated up this reaction? This would be like adding extra product and extra heat to the product side. And that extra water that I pour in will spill over to the reactant side. So the reaction would shift to the left. Okay, the last application of Le Chatelier's principle I'd like to look at is for a reaction containing all gases. So in this reaction, I've got two CO2 gas in equilibrium with two CO gas plus O2 gas. And you can see I've written the Q expression for this reaction right here in this box. I've got the products in the numerator and the reactant in the denominator. And since they're gases, I used partial pressures and I was sure to include my stoichiometric coefficients as my exponents. So let's think about two possible scenarios we could use to shift this reaction away from its equilibrium to observe Le Chatelier's principle in action. So in the first scenario, imagine this reaction is occurring in a container and we decrease the volume of that container, which is the same thing as increasing the pressure in that container. In this case, Le Chatelier's principle says that this reaction is gonna to shift towards the side with less moles of gas. And you can see here that we've got two moles of gas on the left and three moles of gas on the right. So if we decrease the volume or increase the pressure of the container in which this reaction is occurring, it's going to shift to the left. 
What if we did the opposite? What if we increased the volume of the container in which this reaction was occurring or decreased the pressure in that container? Same thing. Well, Le Chatelier's principle says the reaction is gonna to shift towards the side with more moles of gas. And we know there are three moles of gas over here, two moles of gas over here. So in this case, the reaction would shift to the right. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one.